So yesterday we talked about exponential functions. Exponential functions are functions that have an exponent that is a, a variable. So y equals a to the x was our exponential function yesterday. x was our power. It was our exponent in that function. Today we're going to talk about its inverse, which is a logarithmic function. So just as addition and subtraction are inverse operations, exponential functions and log logarithmic functions are inverses of each other. So we define a logarithmic function as y equals log base a of x, if and only if a to the y equals x. Caveat here, a and x have to be positive, and a can't be 1. For x greater than 0 and a greater than 0, a not equal to 1. So if you notice, the answer to a logarithmic equation is the exponent of an exponential equation. When we said y equals the log base a of x, that base a to the answer of that logarithmic equation to the y is equal to x. So part of what we'll be doing today is converting between exponential and logarithmic and vice versa, learning some properties of logs, and then also doing some graphing. All right, so first thing, we want to write these in exponential form. Our first example says log base 10 of 100 equals 2. It's a true statement. And so we want to convert from logarithmic to exponential. You always start with your base. What's our base here? 10. So we say 10 to the answer, the second, is equal to 100. 10 squared is 100. Start with your base. 3 to the fourth equals 81, right? Everybody remembers this from last year, right? Okay. Nothing earth-shattering. Next one. How would we write these in logarithmic form then? Good. Log base 2, because this is our 2, our base, and the 8 is your exponent. It's your answer to your logarithmic equation. Okay. 5 to the third is 125. How do we write that as a logarithmic equation? Log base 5, 125 equals 3. The answer, the power, always goes to the end. And lastly, 17 to the 0 equals 1. Log base 17 of 1 is the power, okay? Remember how to do that, right? Okay, next. So here are some of our more obscure things, the trickier ones that we don't necessarily think of that much, the properties of logarithms. So when we're looking for log base A of 1, is something we're saying base a to what exponent is 1? Good. Because a to the 0 is 1. Okay. Anything to the 0 is 1. Base a to what exponent is a? 1. 
because a to the first is a. Understood one for its power if it's not listed. Log base a, so base a to what exponent is a to the x? x. Because a to the x is a to the x. And base a to what exponent is x when base a to what exponent is y? This is kind of a weird one, right? We have a log base a of x is equal to a log base a of y. Okay? What do you think is happening here? x has to equal y. If we have a log with a base that's equal to a log with a base, Nothing else added on, we're just down to a log base A of something equals log base A of something else. Those two have to be equal to each other. We can drop the logs. Okay? All right. So solve the following. Log base 4 of 16 says base 4 to what exponent is 16? 2. Because 4 squared gets me 16. Base 6 to what exponent is 1? 0, because 6 to the 0 gets me 1. Base 9 to what exponent is 3? 3. So what happened first hour too, I heard a lot, hear a lot of the answers, right? So now let's think about this. Let's put this, let's make this an x. Okay? And let's write the equation out to be sure. So 9 to the x has to be 3. Yesterday we learned the 1 to 1 property, and it said that if we can get our bases the same, then our powers are going to be the same. So what's our like base of each of these? 3. So 9 is 3 squared, right? And 3 is 3 to the first. Now that the bases are the same, the exponents are the same. So we can eliminate the bases and just say 2x equals 1. So what's x? 1 half. So 9 to the 1 half power gets us 3. 9 to the square root of 9 gets us 3. Okay? Last one, log base 2 of negative 1 equals x. No solution. Why is it no solution? Good. A and x cannot be negative, right? We define them as only being positive. There is no such thing that 2 to some power is going to get me a negative 1. Okay? Positive 2 to some power can't get me negative 1, so there's no solution on this one. Okay? What questions do you have on this one? All right, next one. So, next we get to graph. So we can expect you to graph these basic logarithmic functions. Y equals log base 2 of x. How do you suggest we start? Two to the two to the y equals x. Change it to exponential form. Okay? So we took it from our logarithmic equation to an exponential equation. Now this is what's going to be really odd because you're so used to your x being your independent variable and your y being your dependent variable. We solved everything for y all the time. Okay. Now we have something solved for x. So when you make your table, your xy chart, you can still make it with x on the left and y on the right, but we need to fill in our y's here. We want the y's to be things like negative 2, 
negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Five points should be enough to get a general idea of what that graph is going to look like. So when we do that, it's not going to seem natural because we're used to x being independent, y depending on it. Okay? So what is 2 to the negative 2 power? One fourth, because when we have a negative exponent, we drop it to the denominator and then we square it. Okay? Two to the negative one. One over two, one half. Two to the zero. Two to the first. Two to the second. And let's do a two to the third. I think we have room on our graph. Eight. Okay. So now we're ready to plot this guy. But we have to remember, these are our x's now. We're used to mark going to our x-coordinate first and then our y. So we want to go 1 fourth over and 2 down. So these are by, ha by 2's. So I'm going to help myself out here a little bit and fill in the gaps here. All right, so we're at 1 fourth over, 2 down. This was a half, so halfway between. Then we're at one half over and one da uh, two down. Sorry, one down. So one half over, one down. And then one over, zero up. Four over, two up. And we don't have room. Uh, eight over and three up. We do have room. All right. So can everyone see what it's going to look like? We kept going. Shooting off in that direction. And then coming down here. And it's going to be asymptotic to the y-axis. Okay. So far, so good. To talk about domain range. Okay, what's our domain? Zero to infinity. Can we be zero? Nope. Open. Open. What's our range? Negative infinity, positive infinity. Questions do you have on this one? All right, next. So same kind of idea. We're doing y equals the log base 4 of x minus 3. So different base. Okay. And, but it's going to be similar to log base 2 of x, right? But what is this minus 3 going to do? Moves it to the right three. Okay. So you can approach it any number of ways. Okay. But let's change this to exponential so that we're ready to go. And let's actually just change the parent function to exponential. Let's say 4 to the y equals x. Okay, so we can do it two ways. We can graph this but not fill it in and just translate the points all to the right three. Or we can solve it like this, 4 to the y equals x minus 3 and solve for x to get 4 to the y plus 3 equals x. Okay. Either way works. Which would you prefer to see? The second? Okay, so let's do it that way. So again, this is going to seem unnatural, but we want our y to be the dependent variable. Okay, so we'll try 
negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 again. And now we're going to plug numbers in. So 4 to the negative 2 plus 3. We said 4 to the negative 2 is 1 16th. 1 16th plus 3. It's a little more than 3. Okay. Negative 1. 4 to the negative 1 plus 3. 3.25, 3 and 1 fourth. Okay. Anything to the zero power is what? So 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 to the first. 7. And then I think we're going to be too big, right? Because 4 squared is... 16 and 16 plus 3 is 19 bigger than I have room for. Okay? So, when x is 3 and 1 16th, we're 3 plus 1 16th over and 2 down. When we're 3 and a fourth over, we're 1 down. When we're 4 over, we're 0 down. And when we're 7 over, we're 1 up. Okay? So same appearance, right? But shifted in a diff different base. What's our domain here? 3 and above, right? Let's do a negative in, uh, 3 to infinity. Range? Hasn't changed, has it? Okay. What questions do we have about this one? Okay. Had we done it the other way, we would have had Things like 1 16th, right? And 1 4th. So we could have plotted 1 16th and so forth and then just moved every point 3 over. Either way works, but if that's what you prefer, no problem. Okay? All right, next. Natural log, this is notes from yesterday reminding you of it. So if you don't want to write it again, you don't have to. We have that lovely number E, Euler's number, or Napier's constant which is about 2.718281. And E is the base of our natural log, known as ln. So the natural log is log base E, which is about equal to log base 2.718. Okay. So we're going to work with some natural log problems. They occur quite frequently in science when we're working with um, radioactive um, elements and their, de their decay rates. Also with um, sound and with the Richter scale. Okay. So now we want to graph y equals the natural log of x. So if we're told to do this without a graphing calculator, this is nothing more than y equals the log base e of x. So e to some power, so y, is equal to x. Okay? So we have to break out our calculators because we aren't going to be able to take 2.71 to these powers ourselves, right? Not expecting you to. So again, x's are going on one side, y's are going on the other. And we're going to plug in values for y. Okay. So, let's see if I can bring up my graphing calculator.
All right, so let me show you a, well, I guess this one isn't a good one for shortcuts. Okay, so here we go. We're going to say that y is negative 2, so we want to take e to the negative second power. If you have a graphing calculator, your e button is the shift of the natural log, and we want it to be to the negative 2 power. Make sure you use your negative sign, not your minus sign. If you have a standard calculator, same idea. Okay, we'll get 0.135, so 0.1. If you want, you can actually use the second an entry button, and it can save you some typing, because we want this next one to be the negative 1 power. And then you can do second entry to get as we know e to the 0 is going to be 1, right? We know e to the first is 2.71, so let's now find e to the second. e to the 1 will be 2.71. Okay. And then e to the um, 0, of course, is 1. Did you forget? Okay. Okay, so e to the negative second was 0.1, e to the negative first, 0.4, e to the zero, e to the first, and e to the second. Okay, so now we're ready to plot. So when x was negative, uh, was 0.1. So one tenth, y is negative two. When x is four tenths, almost a half, y is one, negative one. When x is one, y is zero. When x is almost three, y is one. When x is seven point four, y is two. That's a general appearance, asymptotic to the y-axis, right? Sorry, x, the, yes, the y-axis, and away we go. Okay, so far so good? All right. Now, to keep me honest, I will go and look and make sure that we don't have anything to this level on your midterm or final. But I don't think you have you have to do this without a graphing calculator. Okay? But let's think about what this guy is going to do. We just graphed our natural log, right? How is this different? Reflection over the x and to the right one. Is it the x or the y? Not sure, are we? Usually when it's with the x that's negative, right, that's a reflection across the y-axis, okay? But with logs, this is a little bit, it seems like it could be different. So let's check it out on Desmos and see what it looks like. I'll put my marker down. All right, so here's our y equals the natural log of x. If we had written that in exponential form, it would be e to the y equals x. Same line, right? Okay. Now, we wanted to shift it right 1, and then we're not sure about this reflection, right? So let's see what happens. You want to bet? Anyone have a, have a, a good feeling about it? So it was about the x-axis like we thought, because it's not with the, the negative's not with the x itself, it was outside of the function. Okay, so our instincts were right, which is the same as this, right? But notice how you'd have to solve this. 
e to the negative y because we're trying to get the the we're trying to get this by itself, right? So we would divide each by negative to get the y to be negative, and then e to that negative y is equal to x minus one. Then to solve the for the x, you would add one. Okay. So if you had to do this on a graphing calculator, we're saying the negative natural log of x minus one. So let's pull up our graphing calculator. Turn it on. And y equals the negative, so change the sign, of the natural log of x minus one. Okay, we hit graph and we get it, which is what we were expecting. Okay, and then of course we can go to our table and see that it was undefined when x was 0 or 1 and it had values for 2 and so forth. Okay, because of that shift to the right one. Okay, now if you don't have the table the way you want it, you can go to table set and tell it where you want to start and how, how, what's your delta table, what's your change in your table, how often, what's your increment. Okay? Those of you who don't have a graphing calculator, you do have a graphing calculator in Desmos, right? So we'll move this out of the way. And the cool thing about Desmos, you may not have noticed it, but this is our function, right? If I go to my gear icon and click edit list, did you ever see this table before? Have you ever clicked on it? So I'm going to duplicate it so we can still see it, but then I'm going to convert to table. And look what we get. Lots of undefines because it wants to use the negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1 like I typically do. That's a good common place to start. But what happens if we put a 3 in here? It calculates it for us. 4, 5, 6. So it will fill in those gaps for you. So if you don't have a graphing calculator, a, true, a, t a Texas Instrument or a Casio, you can bring up Desmos on your phone and get the same information. So far so good? All right, let's keep moving. All right. Last examples. Next we are to solve log base 12 of x minus 3 equals log base 12 of 2x plus 5. Remember the one-to-one -one property yesterday? When the bases were the same, then the exponents were the same, right? We have log base 12 equals log base 12. Are our bases the same? Okay, so should the answers be the same? Make sense? Okay. So now we simply solve our algebra problem. X away. Take away 5. Make sense? But how did we define our log? We defined it as a log base a of x, right? Equals y or what have you. And what was special about x's and a's? They have to be positive, okay? So did we get something that when we plug it back in, it will be positive? No. So what do we have to say here? No solution. Okay. Because there is no, nothing that we can do to take if negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11, 12 to no power is going to get me negative 11. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay. 
All right, next one. What are we going to do here? Make them equal, right? Because log base 3 is equal to log base 3. So our bases are the same. There's nothing else added on. So our x plus 4 will be equal to 29. Take away 4. If x squared is 25, what's x? Anytime we introduce a square root, we have to remember always, always, always introduce the plus or minus. So plus or minus 5. Let's check them. If we plugged 5 in here, 5 minus 3, we're golden, right? Okay. Negative 5 minus 3, not so much. Okay. So we have to exclude the negative 5 and just say that x can only be positive 5. Oh, I was putting in the wrong wrong equation. Hold on. It can. Sorry about that. I started putting it in this top equation. So x was plus or minus 5. I thought I was going to make it, make it through without a mistake today. x squared is 25, right? 25 plus 4 is 29. Yep. And it actually worked. And then negative 5 squared is 25, and 25 and 4 is 29. So they both work. Okay. Questions? All right, let me give you the assignment. 